Hey, I'm Chris Baldwin with Bear Not Fishing in Ketchikan, Alaska. In this video, I'm going to go over how we fish for Dungeness crab. More often than not, we find crabs in river mouths and in bays. Uh, one of the main things you're looking for is crab grass. It's a certain type of grass that they spawn in. If you see it on the shores, that's a good sign that there's going to be crab in the bay. So we usually fish anywhere from 30 to 120 feet deep for crab. We're looking for sandy bottom. Uh, once we throw the pots out, uh, like to, we've had crab in the pots as early as 10 minutes, but we'd like to let them sit for a number of hours. Uh, we do a cook your cats trip and we go out and, and first thing we do is set crab pots and then we go and, and they're soaking the whole time we fish. And while it does take a little bit of time away from fishing, it is just a really special experience. Uh, and when we're doing the, the meal in the restaurant, it's just really nice to have fresh crab. These bags are important because it prevents them from just tearing this apart. Uh, if, and it, the bait lasts a lot longer and it gives it a lot more opportunity for more crabs to come into the pot. Well, we put this in and you want it suspended because if there's sand fleas and there's a lot of other types of things at the bottom that will devour this bait quickly if it's touching the bottom. If you keep it up off the bottom, then the crabs can get it, but it keeps everything else out. So the idea on these traps is pretty basic. You put this down there, you have your bait putting a really nice tent trail out. They smell it from a distance and they come looking for it once they find the trap. Uh, they usually crawl all over it, but they're looking for these gates. Once they get in here, it just allows it so they can go right in but then they can't get out. We use a hundred foot of lead core line. Lead core is important because if, you, if this is a hundred feet and we're in about 40 feet of water, so there's gonna be 60 extra feet of line and it's important for that line to sink because if it floats, somebody might run it over and get it into their props and uh, they'd be having a really bad day. All right, so everything's ready and we toss it in and we just make sure that the line comes out nice and smooth. So pots have been soaking for about three hours now and we're gonna check them out and see what we got. It's feeling kind of heavy, so hoping we have some crabs. Oh, there we go. All right, well, we have some crabs. Just pulled it up and have about 10 crabs in here. A couple keepers, it looks like. Yeah, looks like uh, this is a good haul. If you hold them like that, they're not gonna be able to get you. You could also hold just their back two legs. So first thing I do is I take all the females and the obviously small ones and just chuck them out. In Southeast Alaska, we're only allowed to keep the males. Uh, you can tell this is a female because of its abdomen. This is the egg sac that holds the eggs and it's round. This is a male. You can see the sharp V on their abdomen and that's how we identify them. Gauge makes it really easy to tell the one's legal. And uh, so six and a half inches is right there and you measure from the inside to the inside. So this guy is about a quarter inch off. Here's a legal crab. This guy's just barely legal. Dungeness crab are one of the best eaten things in the ocean, and it's never gonna taste as good as the day you caught it. One of the great things about the cook your catch is the next step would be to take this thing into town and cook it up and just have an amazing meal to, to finish the day off. For more videos like this, or to book a fishing trip, check us out at exclusivealaska.com.